The Barn and the Book Chapter 5 Part 2 Sister Anna sniffed again and shut the door behind her. With one last glance to be sure that all of the children were with Sister Catherine, Sister Anna turned away from the church and the animal farm and made her way to the prayer garden, to her favorite seat in her favorite corner. Sister Anna sat down slowly. Her breath puffed around her in little clouds. The cold air pressed against her. Sister Anna hugged herself tight for warmth and closed her eyes. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Sister Anna shivered. She tried to hug herself even tighter. Oh, Lord Jesus, I made another mistake. I made a big mistake, and that was bad enough, but the big mistake showed me how many other mistakes I'm making. The Sunday school class ran away, the whole class. They ran straight out of the room, and they didn't pay any attention to me at all. They didn't even show that they heard my words. Maybe they didn't. It was so loud in there. But it just shows that my teaching is always bad, not just today. If they had any respect for me, they would listen when I talk. I didn't earn their respect, so now, when I need them to listen, they don't. The air around Sister Anna was completely still. The sounds of the children and saucer had faded. Perhaps they had gone back into the building. I shouldn't be the Sunday school teacher. I'm so bad at it. Why did Eurantissa give me this job? It was a mistake. Sister Anna's eyes popped open. It was hard to imagine Eurantissa, the abbess of the monastery, making a mistake. Maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe Eurantissa had some mysterious purpose. Sister Anna closed her eyes again. You know I'm not very good at discerning your will, Lord Jesus. I think Eurantissa made a mistake. I think someone else should teach the children. Should I tell her? Sister Anna tried to imagine herself seeking out Eurantissa in the small wood-paneled room behind the monastery office. What would she say to her? Sister Anna realized she would have to begin by explaining that her whole class had escaped from her during Sunday school. The whole class. Because of a dog and two runaway goats. No, not because of goats. Sister Anna closed her eyes again. Because of me. Because I didn't stop them from running away. I would tell her that, and then she would know that someone else should teach the children. Maybe Sister Sophia. Probably Sister Catherine. Sister Anna breathed a long, wobbly sigh in the middle of her prayer. She sat still, squeezing herself and shivering in the cold, cold air. It's not that I mind telling Eurantissa what happened, Lord. Well, I do mind. But someone else will tell her anyway. Probably they already have. Sister Anna let go of herself long enough to bury her face in one hand and shake her head. In your mercy, Lord Jesus, tell me what to do. Show me a sign. Her eyes opened again. She was shuddering with cold. I'm too cold to pray with my eyes shut. Lord, when Gideon wanted a sign that he could truly save Israel from the Midianites, he laid a sheepskin in the grass and came out in the morning to see if it was wet with dew and the ground around it dry. Show me a sign, like Gideon, a sign that will tell me what to do at the monastery. I'm a bad teacher, Lord, but I will ask Eurantissa to help me try again if you want me to. Or I will ask her for another job if you want me to. How will I know? Sister Anna stared around the garden, looking for inspiration. Should she ask for one of the bushes to burst into bloom in the middle of November? That seemed a little over the top. She was pretty sure she should only ask for a very tiny miracle. Her eyes rested on a small tree branch that must have blown down in the night. It was about 18 inches long, and it lay in the withered grass near the corner of the box hedge. Sister Anna stood up. Then she sat down and closed her eyes. I will use that stick, Lord. I'm going to lean it up against the back of this seat. If it's still there and still upright when I come back in the morning after prayers, it will be a sign that I should stop being the Sunday school teacher. If it's gone or has fallen down, it will be a sign that I should still be the Sunday school teacher. Sister Anna opened her eyes and stood up again. Her teeth began to chatter. She scuttled across the quiet garden, picked up the stick, and scuttled back again. The stick felt icy and brittle in her stiff fingers. 
She stood the stick upright, resting its tip on the ground behind the seat, and leaned the other end up against the back of the seat. The back of the seat was covered in tree bark because the seat had been carved from an old stump. The tip of her stick rested neatly between two ridges in the bark. It looked like it would probably still be standing in the morning. Sister Anna glanced around the garden. For some reason, she felt nervous. Well, I can't think of anything else to do, Lord, so this will be it. There's the stick. I will come back in the morning. She started to walk away, then stopped and looked back over her shoulder. The stick was still there, motionless, leaning against the seat. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Sister Anna ran out of the prayer garden.